Good morning, everybody. The word of the past few weeks have really changed my life. And we have been looking at being nation builders, being people who build, who empower other people. And therefore, our lives need to be built up. And we have learned that when we operate in childish systems, like still lying or gossiping or being jealous, that it means you and I cannot be that mother and father of nation that God has called us to be. And we have learned in the past few weeks in regards with stress. What is stress? Now, stress equals the pressure that you and I are experiencing minus the capacity that we have to deal with that. And we looked at 10 ways to walk in freedom, like not comparing yourself with others, um, not having a competitive spirit, not having a critical spirit, uh, getting rid of toxic environments, removing yourself from those environments, spending time in prayer with God, and we looked at many more others. And so we saw last week and the week before that the power of God, the kingdom of God is with inside each and every one of us. Wherever we go, we take that power, that kingdom, that joy, righteousness and peace in the Holy Spirit with us. And therefore, we cannot afford to be stressed out. We cannot afford to live in childish systems. But now today we are continuing and I'm reading Matthew eleven twenty eight, And it says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So how will you find rest for your souls? By learning from Jesus, by taking his yoke upon you. But if you love God and you take his yoke upon you, you, the yoke that he has. In other words, he's yoked of his purpose. You are yoked in his purpose. You are empowering others. You are lifting others up. You are building those around you. You are laying down your life. And not that it's about me and I will compromise or I give you this, but I want that back. Now, unconditionally, you lay down your life for Jesus Christ. You sow your life because he is your father. God is your father. And he will give you everything that you need, knowing that in God you cannot lose. Knowing that Jesus gave you everything so you have everything that you are an ambassador of God and as you give knowing that as an ambassador you are financed you are protected you are covered by the kingdom of God you are only a representative you are being looked after and that is why I can take the yoke so he says to take the yoke and to learn from me this speaks about a process and this reminds me of our previous sermons that we started with. Do not run off to the achievements. Enjoy the process. Enjoy your journey in life. Find joy in that. Because if we talk about learning, it means that it will take time. It, it doesn't happen overnight. You never come to a place where you just arrive. None of us ever arrive because then you are with your father in heaven. So therefore, it's a constant learning process. Now he says, you learn from me and so you will find rest. Where do you find rest? By learning. And not learning anything and from anyone. Where do we learn from? We learn from Jesus. We learn how to function in his vision of loving God, loving people. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And now what does 1 John 5 verse 3 says? It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. And what is his commandments? Love God and love people. So when you and I start to do the things of God, do you know what happens within our lives? Your capacity increases. Your capacity grows. You as a person grow. And now you can handle pressure because we are called to handle pressure. Yes, not to be stressed out, but to handle pressure. Because the moment you start to love, to love people, do you know what happens? You know, you, you deal with all their issues as well. You deal with all their problems. There's extra pressure coming on you. But now you can love people. Uh, the people you can love God you can come and say you know I this place for one more this place for one more because you have the capacity to deal with that but today we're especially looking at Philippians 4 verse 6 where it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. 
So instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, what must we do? We must pray. But how do we pray? He says, pray with thanksgiving. So you don't just pray any old prayer. You don't sit and complain and murmur the whole time. God doesn't answer just any old prayer. How do we need to pray? We need to pray with a heart, with an attitude of thanksgiving. We've got to pray with prayer. And we've got to pray with thanksgiving. Say with me, thanksgiving. Amen. So in Luke 17 verse 11, we read about the lepers that came to Jesus and they asked him to heal them. So there were 10 lepers that came and he healed all of them. But how many came back? Only one came back. Listen to this, Luke 17 verse 15. And one of them, when he saw what, that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So how many returned? One. How many were healed? Ten were healed. And you see the reason that only one returned is that not everybody wanted the miracle maker, but everyone did want the miracle. And even today in our lives, we all want the miracles. We all want things to go well. We all want God to come through for us. But do we really want God? Do we want the way maker, the miracle worker within our lives? Do we want to lay down our lives and say, I will lay down my life for the Lord? In verse 15, he says, one of them, when he saw he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Say with me, with a loud voice. Yes. And then he fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. So say with me again, with a loud voice. So what did he do? He glorified God. There was thanksgiving. There was glory with a loud voice. Now, for some of us, you know, we get a little bit scared of loud in a church on Sunday. But he says with a loud voice, he said he fell down on his feet giving thanks. And he says in verse 17, so Jesus answered and said, where, were there not ten lepers or, or ten cleansed? And he said, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Listen to this. Were there not any found? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Which means, if he asked, were there not any found, then the thing is that it means God was looking. Who was looking? God was looking. What was God looking for? He was looking for people with a thankful heart. So, here's the thing. God has a miracle. He will provide. He will heal. He will deliver. He will give. He will forgive. But then he is looking. And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Another translation says, Your faith has made you whole. So he said there were 10 people healed, but only one was made whole. I'm saying it again. 10 were healed, but only one were made whole. Why? Because of thanksgiving, because of joy, because of his heart. And we are talking at the moment in a series on the blood on the heart. That see, you can try to change your behavior, but your heart will always come through. If you change your heart, this is when your life changes. So is your heart right? Is life all about you, what you can get from God, what God can do for you, giving you a nice life so that you can be comfortable? Or is it actually about God's works and God's things and God's grace in people's lives, changing people's lives? He says, arise for your faith has made your whole. And here is what happens when you and I truly worship God. We are being made whole. There's no way that you can worship God in spirit and in truth and still be a broken and a hurt person. God comes, His Spirit comes, the blood of Jesus comes and He makes you completely whole in your soul, in your spirit, in your body. And now He says He's been made whole by His thanksgiving. And the psychologists today, you know, they say that the sincere heart of gratitude is one of the most healthiest emotions that any person can experience. Even the psychologist who is considered the father of stress says that gratitude produces more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in our lives. Now, how more the things of God, the joy of the Lord, the, the gratefulness towards God, the, 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 the peace of God within our life, how much more doesn't that produce within our lives? And that is why the Bible teaches you and me that we need to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 1 to 4. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. 
It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His uh, people and the sheep of His pastures. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and enter into His courts with praise. Be thankful and bless His name. So when you are struggling with distress, when you have pressure, when you're struggling with things within your life, what do you need to do? You need to have a heart and you need to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. But you know what? You need to be thankful when things are good and you need to be thankful when things are bad. You need to be thankful when things, even when you're sick or when you're healthy. Because here's the thing, you can be healthy in your body, but it doesn't mean that you are whole. You were made to live a life of thanksgiving unto the Lord. And therefore, it's got nothing to do with your personality. He says, make a joyful noise. Why do we shout? Because that everything that is within us get into that action of shouting. And now we shout louder than that stress within our lives. We shout louder than that uh, circumstances, than the depression that wants to creep in, than the negativity, that pressure. And now it says all your lands, all your colors, all your personalities, all your cultures come and shout to God. And now you say, oh, Pastor, but you know, it's not my personality. Well, it was your personality when your team was winning and you were running around the couch. It was your personality when you saw the dog coming and you started screaming, running away. So it's not about personality. It's about your heart. It is about what is in your heart. I remember youth camp and there was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the one girl came to my dad. She said, Pastor, you know, these kids, they're dancing like this and going crazy, but this is not who I am. And, and my dad says, don't you worry. You just be who you are. And you know that one time God touched her life. And this girl was dancing more than anyone else out of joy and gratitude for what God has done within her life. So it is not your personality. It is your heart. It is having an encounter with God. And this is the thing. Maybe you need to go look at your own heart because maybe you are your own God. This is why you are so depressed. This is why you are so morbid. Maybe you are the savior of your own life and God helps you if you are because you know what? You should be really worried. Maybe you are the one that says, Pastor, but I am the one. I've worked hard on my marriage. This is why it's such a success. I'm working hard on this. This is why it's working. You know what? We all are working hard. At the end of the day, if it had not been for God in our lives, we would not be where we are today. You know, we must come to a place and say, Lord, this is because I trusted you, because I surrendered my life to you. And therefore, just where you are today, let us become aware of the presence of God right in our house where we're sitting today. And maybe you're struggling within your own life with a spirit of gratitude. Today, I want to tell you, God loves you. God cares for you. God wants to work within your life right now. God wants to bring a change and a transformation within your life today because God loves you and He truly cares for you. But see, some of you don't trust God. Some of you think, after all I've done, God can't really, I can't really expect God to do anything for me. Some of you think God doesn't want to help you. You think you're not qualified. You think you're not worthy. You think you're not good enough. But I've got good news for you. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. And His mercies are not for the self-righteous. His mercies are for the guilty. And we need God in our life because He is the one that forgives us. He is the one that cleanses us. He is the one that changes us. And he is the one who transforms us. God is the one that renews and restores our hearts and our lives. But see, some of us, we don't have the spirit of gratitude. We can't even come to God in supplication and prayer. We don't even come to Him because we don't have the confidence. But just where you are, come let us close our eyes and pray this prayer with me. Just where you are, say with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me for the sin of ingratitude. Please forgive me for complaining and being critical. Please forgive me for not coming to you, for having the wrong attitude. This morning, Lord, I come with a grateful heart. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you died on the cross and that my sins could be forgiven. I thank you that you died for me and my family, for our neighborhood. Lord, I thank you that our lives are in your hands. Lord, I do not have to worry. I do not be, have to be anxious. 
You are in control of my life, of my family, of my future. Thank you, Lord, that you are in control. I give you praise. I give you honor. No matter what I feel, no matter what the circumstances is, Lord, I will give you praise. I will give you honor in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And now we're going to do something. And I can't shout too loud. But I'm going to shout a bit. I'm going to give count to three. And then we're all just going to praise the name of the Lord. And just experience His presence in our house, in our room, in our office, wherever you are. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift up your name. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for your greatness. Thank you, God. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Yes! Praise the Lord! Continue to praise the Lord for the rest of this week. God bless you.